सर काढतोय ना आपण फोटो नाही सर सर आवाज फक्त जरा मोठ्याने बोला आवाज तुमचा लहान येत आहे फार फोटो काढतोय ना आपण सर युट्यूब इज नाव लागेल आवाज येतोय सर माझा व्यवस्थित येतोय एम आय ऑडिबल प्रॉपरली फोटो काढताय ना तुम्ही संदीप प्रशांत सर तुम्ही पण काढा फोटो तर सुरू करूया आपण तीस जणा झालो येस सर वी विल स्टार्ट ऑडिओ कोणाचं तरी सुरू आहे बरं का आवाज येतोय शर्मा सर शर्मा सर येस सर हा तुमचा आवाज माईक आणि व्हिडिओ दोन्ही चालू आहे दोन्ही बंद करा सर प्लीज थँक्यू सर थँक्यू आवाज पण सर तुमचं हे चालू आहे करूया आपण चालू मॅम चालू करूया ना येस येस स्टार्ट सर प्लीज प्लीज गुड इव्हनिंग वन अँड ऑल आय वेलकम द गेस्ट स्पीकर श्री फ्रँकलिन अबॉट हु इज जॉईनिंग अस फ्रॉम युनायटेड स्टेट्स मिस्टर फ्रँकलिन अबॉट इज अ रिनाउंड सायकोथेरपिस्ट पोएट अँड कन्सल्टंट ही इज गोईंग टू डेलिव्हर Thirty second late Dr. V. N. Bedekar Memorial Lecture today on the topic "Life is a Risk Worth Taking." On behalf of the college, I welcome him. I welcome Honorable Chairman of Vidya Prasarak Mandal, Dr. V. J. Bedekar. I welcome our beloved Principal, Dr. Suchitra Naik Madam, on this occasion. I welcome all the dignitaries, Vice Principals, Heads of the Departments, Teachers, Students, and our friends. from the press i also welcome librarian dr barse sir i also welcome dr sudhakar agarkar sir and all the students those who are watching us online through youtube vidya prasarak mandal is a cultural and educational icon of thane city it has shaped the very cultural and intellectual fabric of thane city and its vicinity vpm caters to the educational need of around 18000 students colleges ranging from arts commerce science law management engineering polytechnic are run by vpm late dr v n bedekar was a man behind this mission of disseminating knowledge among the masses with the motto prajwalito gnanamaya pradeepah late dr v n bedekar is known as a great philanthropist an institutional builder a devoted medical practitioner and an architect of educational and cultural arena of thane in 2017 vidya prasarak mandal celebrated his 100th birth anniversary to cherish his everlasting memories joshi bedekar college has started organizing late dr v n bedekar memorial lecture series since then a galaxy of eminent speakers delivered lectures in this series renowned theater artist padmashri वामन केंद्रे पद्मश्री एंड सीड मदर राहीबाई पोपरे पद्मश्री प्रकाश आमटे मॅगासेसे अवॉर्डी निलिमा मिश्रा भारत वाटवानी अँड मेनी मोर हॅव कॉन्ट्रीब्युटेड टू दिस जर्नी फ्रेंड्स कोविड नाईन्टीन पॅन्डेमिक हॅज लिटरली चेंज अवर वर्ल्ड व्ह्यू वी हॅव विटनेस्ड द स्ट्रगल फॉर एक्झिस्टन्स इन दिस पॅन्डेमिक ॲट द बॅकड्रॉप ऑफ दिस द टायटल फॉर टुडेज लेक्चर इज व्हेरी रेलेवंट लाईफ इज अ रिस्क वर्थ टेकिंग we have lost many near and dear ones but the hope springs eternal william shakespeare in his play macbeth says life but a walking shadow a poor player that struts and frets his hour uh, upon the stage and his and in his as you like it he says all the world is a stage and all the men and women merely play with but the same shakespeare 
in his last play tempest depicts an optimistic picture of human life one of the celebrated character miranda from the play tempest says oh wonder how many goodly creatures are there here how beauteous mankind is oh brave new world oh brave new world that has such people in it wordsworth remembers his youth when french revolution was there in the air he said bliss was it in that dawn to be alive but to be young was very heaven we have invited a person from the land of robert frost who in his famous poem stopping by woods on snowy evening said woods are lovely dark and deep but i have promises to keep miles to go before i sleep miles to go before i sleep at this juncture i now invite our principal madam to give her opening remarks dr suchitra ayi naik good evening one and all our uh, chief guest today franklin abbot uh, i welcome you sir has already welcomed you uh, thank you prashant sir for giving background backdrop of this uh, lecture series uh, just uh, adding two three points uh, today's guest is not uh, actually a guest he has visited our college physically before uh, covid pandemic and he has contributed considerably to conference which was on happiness so i remember that secondly he has also contributed immensely through books uh, for uh, i am mean, helping us to create a reservoir of knowledge and looking at his biodata we all uh, know of, of course i mean not only biodata we have met him in person his poetry we have heard from him comes across as a very fine human being could uh, relate with our children our children were very happy with him they just flocked around him so his uh, you know capacity of getting connected with youngsters is tremendous sir uh, this lecture series is happening um, you know for past few years as prashant sir has said but uh, something very interesting you are first international speaker in this lecture series so uh, this would be this 32nd lecture would uh, you know uh, is making a small history this is a small historical moment for us it's very big moment but uh, for you it may be a small moment now uh, uh, so i congratulate uh, uh, dr mahesh patil for uh, you know taking this lecture series ahead for so many years the mmc department entire department with him is uh, taking efforts to you know invite uh, different people scholars social uh, entrepreneurs also uh, you know knowledgeable people from various walks of life so i'm sure pretty sure you know your experience in varied fields as a social worker as a gender sensitizer as a philosopher as a poet we are really looking forward to uh, listen to you so once again thank you sir for accepting our invitation being connected with us also looking forward to you know some other collaborative efforts for our students uh, from your end and from our end we also have as you know counseling cell we also have philosophy department which is now you know has is trying to put a step forward through philosophical counseling or philosophical praxis in behaviors so thank you and over to you prashant sir thank you principal madam now i would like to introduce our chief guest the speaker shri franklin abbot Franklin earned masters in social work from University of Georgia in 1978. He was director Turner County Trading Center for the developmentally disabled for 3 years. He served as a social worker psychiatric unit Athens General Hospitals. From 1979 he is engaged in private practice he is a psychotherapist and consultant. He works in Georgia as a psychotherapist with groups and business. as a psychotherapist he works with adult and adolescent clients in individual and group psychotherapy couples and families 
As a consultant, he works with business owners and employees and directors of non-profit organizations to streamline operations and plan for the future. He has given numerous professional workshops and seminars throughout the US and Europe and Asia on the wide range of the topics. He has uh, so many publications. They are New Main, New Minds, Boyhood, Pink Xenia. In addition to the six books and CDs, he had numerous publications of poems, essays, and reviews. We still remember his renditions of poem in our international conference when he was delivering his speech. He writes a blog titled 10 Minutes Muse. He, uh, his papers are collected in the Women and Gender Collection in the archives of Georgia State University. He has offered workshops over the past 30 years that have focused on creativity, healing, aging. He is a member of Society for the Integration of Psychology and Spirituality. Georgia Society of Clinical Social Workers. He is a volunteer for Oral Histories, Women and Gender Collection Archives, Georgia State University. He was, a, as the principal madam uh, has just mentioned about it, he was a speaker at one of the plenary sessions in the International Conference on Pursuit of Happiness organized by the Department of Philosophy and Psychology, Joshi Bedeka College. He visited our college that time during COVID pandemic. The world was at heart. Mr. Franklin, gifted 1,000 rare books to the Shibedeka College Library. He sent the books via sea route on the boat, metaphorically named Evan Ho. In the words of Franklin, the books left Atlanta in March, went by truck to Chicago, by rail to New York, and on the tanker, the Evan Ho down the South Atlantic shipping lanes, through the Mediterranean Sea, the Suez Canal, the Red Sea, the Arabian Sea, to the port of Mumbai, where they sat for a one month going through customs. So we are truly elated to invite uh, Sri Franklin Abbott to deliver his lecture. I now invite him to deliver his lecture. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I have many, many fond memories of uh, being at the college, uh, meeting many of the people whose pictures I'm seeing, and uh, certainly, it, you know, I, I I so appreciate this invitation. Thanks to Madam Principal, thanks to my friend uh, Professor Prashant. Um, it, it, it's a lovely thing to be here and to be able to speak with you and to speak with your students. Uh, the, the journey of the books was quite an extraordinary thing because we began before COVID and just as uh, the books were packed up and ready to go, everything had to shut down. Uh, once uh, there was a little bit of safety, uh, the, the, we were able to get them out of my house and um, onto you know, trucks and trains and ultimately a big shipper who, or a big uh, cargo ship who, you know, as, uh, Prashant said, went through the Suez Canal. It's rather remarkable. I'm so glad that they're there. Uh, you all have a, an amazing uh, community. Uh, it, it was a, a real pleasure to get to know people, and you took such good care of me. I really, really appreciate that. And I'm very, very happy to be able to be with you today as your uh, uh, speaker for this uh you know, very important occasion. Uh, I've read about your founder. He was an extraordinary human being. Uh, he was someone who did so much for your community in terms of uh, focusing on what was needed, uh, which were medical needs and cultural needs and educational needs. And so many people, thousands and thousands of people have benefited from his endeavor. So it, it's, uh, Again, it's quite a remarkable community that you have. It's an honor for me to be here. And, and thank you so much for inviting me. And I believe back Prashant. to you, Prashant. Yes, 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 yes. We are, we are coming out with the- Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir.
Life is a risk worth taking. Without much thought, my body awakens and arises each day. And without much thought, when darkness falls, my breathing patterns change. And I breathe my way down to sleep and pray that spirit holds me deep and I should rise when the morning breaks. I stretch and yawn and the lids of my eyes open into light to the light. Hello, my name is Franklin Abbott and I am speaking to you from my home in Midway Woods, which is near the Decatur area of Atlanta, Georgia, USA. I'm speaking to two audiences uh, with this talk. Uh, I'm speaking to the First Existentialist Congregation of Atlanta. Uh, they are an open spiritual community whose members have different beliefs but share a commitment to community, equality, and human liberation. And I'm speaking to the faculty, students, and administration of Joshi Bedeker College in Thane, near Mumbai in India. Uh, I spoke at the college in 2019 at the International Conference on the Pursuit of Happiness and recently sent half a ton of my books to their library. Uh, they have a, a vibrant student population, wonderful faculty, and I, I have never felt so welcomed or so nourished. So uh, I'm speaking to both audiences on the same topic. Life is a risk worth taking. We take risk every day. And mostly we become accustomed to the risks that we are taking and we don't think about them that much. Uh, I don't think about the risk involved in getting in my car and driving. I don't think about the risk involved in buying food at the supermarket and preparing it myself. Um, COVID has increased my awareness of risk quite a lot. Uh, every day is a math problem. And some days, you know, it just wears a person out and we wonder if it's worth it. Um, we've been through highs and lows in the United States. You know, we, we were all mutually terrified. Those of us who are conscious were mutually terrified until we could get vaccinated. Uh, you know, then we had a little period of time where we felt like the vaccination was taking care. Uh, we soon learned, too soon learned, that the, there was a more toxic variable out there, a more potent variable of the COVID virus, and that our vaccinations had begun to wane in effectiveness. So those of us with concerns became more concerned until we got our booster shots. Then we felt a little bit relieved, a little bit more able to have a social life and then the new variant showed up. And we're all wondering now how potent our vaccines are again, those of us who have been fortunate enough to be vaccinated. Uh, I read a, an article in the New York Times today that uh, all across the United States, uh, blood pressure is up. People are having more stress and it's reflected in having higher blood pressure. I've also read articles about how COVID affects our dreams. Um, for me, it's just a daily calculation. Who do I want to be with? What situations feel safe to me? Uh, I sort of pe treat people like calories. I can't have too many in a day. Um, everybody has their own way of doing the math. I have friends who are more casual than I am. I have friends uh, who are far more conservative than I am, but for the most part, everybody I know has a certain level of concern. Uh, we are taking risks, and that is always a challenge. Uh, I'm a social scientist by training, a social worker, li licensed clinical social worker, and so what we are taught in school is that, you know, you do research on what you're talking about, um, you know, and so instead of doing, going to journals to do research on risk, uh, I asked my friends on Facebook if they would send me, uh, you know, something relevant to uh, the question, is life a risk worth taking? Um, 
my friend Jose Aguilar, who's a human rights activist in Mexico City, very appropriately, not knowing that I would be speaking to an existentialist group, sent me a quote from the existentialist philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre. To know what life is worth, you have to risk it once in a while. My friend Alice Teeter, who I believe is the informal poet laureate of Pine Lake, Georgia, uh, wrote, hmm, I'm not sure that one could really risk one's life, one should re literally risk one's life, although I guess skydiving and freestyle rock climbing both could be that, and lots of people do that, and some lose their lives. I, I think risking everything else is worth the risk for sure. Heart, reputation, money. Our friend, the, the poet Jessica Danielle, replied uh, that uh, driving or riding in a car is more risky than skydiving, which I believe is true. Uh, my college pal, uh, storyteller David Thompson, who lives in Austin, Texas, sent me a, a meme. It says, I'm not much on seizing the day. I just kind of poke it with a stick. My friend Michael O'Boyle, who is an artist in Cork, Ireland, says, depends on the odds. And my friend Patty Deck, who is a wise woman who lives in San Diego, California, says, risk is a growth opportunity. I say life goes better with a stretch, a creative move, and or a change in routine, big or small. My life has been full of risk-taking and opportunities. Um, I also did informal research by opening my fortune cookie at the uh, Golden Buddha restaurant not far from my home last night where I shared a dinner with my friend Kevin and uh, the, the cookie was, you know, spot on in terms of its uh, message to me. You will continue to take chances and be glad you did. Um, during this process of... Uh, taking chances, calculating the risk. Uh, I've, I've had some difficult moments, and I believe that that's true for many of us. And I think that, uh, you know, sometimes all you do with a difficult moment is that you sit with it and let it pass through you. Sometimes you ask for support. Sometimes you distract yourself. Uh, I don't think the difficult moments are done. I think that whether it is COVID or something else, there are always going to be things that affect us in life, uh, always things that challenge us. And there will be times when we're tired and we wonder if life is a risk worth taking. And I want to reflect on some of those moments uh, in my life over this, the past several months that I've, I've written about. Uh, let me read you a few, place, uh, a few pieces about that. Disappointment. Disappointment is one of my triggers, like halt. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. I'm also triggered by car trouble. Weird charges on my credit card by the credit card company. The perceived illness of one of my cats and branches that fall from trees on my house. I used to be unwilling, unable to accept my eccentricity and was critical of others, especially those with eccentricities I did not share. I had a friend with a phobia for green onions. She always asked every time we ordered anything in a restaurant if the dish had green onions. The gift of living a long life is that I have accepted those little kinks in my psyche when the world grows dark and scary and I wonder, how will I ever? But I always do. The car gets fixed. The cats go to the vet. If I'm tired, I take a nap. If I'm hungry, I make a sandwich. If I'm angry, I huff and puff. If I'm lonely, well, there's the rub. I can't hold an invisible hand. I can't conjure a hand out of ether even if I can remember such a wonderful time, such a joyous occasion, such a lark in the dark. If I muster, 
I take a deep, full breath and slowly exhale. exhale. I say a prayer, touch an idol, ring a bell, light incense, clap my hands. I cannot stand on my head or make pasta from scratch or play my piano, but I can sing. I can sing my song. Here's a little comfort song I sing to my cats and I sing for you now. How does the sun come up? How does the moon go round? How do the flowers break the earth and face the sun and push one petal at a time and bloom all the way open, all the way open, all the way open? I do, you do, we do. This is a, a, a piece I wrote about feeling free of some of the burdens. And I think all of us have found those little things that distract us, give us pleasure, amuse us, so that we can be in the moment and not constantly calculating, you know, the math of risk in our heads. Float free. When I went to the nursery today, I looked for the most unusual bulbs, and I asked the woman working there, why are spider lily bulbs so expensive? She stammered and said she'd have to Google it. Seven dollars a bulb is a lot. And yet when these beauties burst forth in September, their lacy red crowns bring joy to my heart. I bought a cat toy at the dollar store, a pink fish on a string, and my cats hate it with a fervor. That brings joy to my heart. My female feline, Zephyr, is the fastest being I've ever watched, and Regal Ferdinand easily captures the pink fish and bites it with glee. I speak on Messenger with a dear friend who moved away for reasons that are aligned with his destiny. I miss him and wish we were sitting across the dinner table. He was one of the few I kept company with when the cloud of COVID overwhelmed us. I know he is living his best life, and my heart is cheered by a video chat. And after that, the quiet of the night, the frogs singing in the trees, the lolling of the cats, and a quiet sip of tea lets me go, lets me let go of this mortal chain, the pain of the body and soul, and float free. And this is about relationships, the circle of love. The circle of love is a merry-go-round that mostly for we forget we're riding on. It takes us on a panoramic tour of life around and around again to the same place twice and twice again. Just like our friend the moon on whom we croon or howl or scowl, we are waxing and waning coming in and out of light and in and out of mystery. A wheel of fortune is all that luck delivers. Sometimes we ring a bell, and sometimes, well, hell, call it a night and go home. Maybe what brings delight is neither. It is the tease of not knowing, not being entirely at ease. The wind is blowing, the chimes are ringing, and the melody uncertain. On a cross-quarter night, the one where the veil between the worlds is light as feathers, is the face we see reflected in the water, a face of your or the future, all the same, familiar. Sometimes what makes us who we are is the difficulty that we go through. Um, there's an old saying about the heart that, you know, it, it, heart can't penetrate or emanate from the heart unless it's been broken. You know, it's, it's uh, we, we have to experience life in order to be affected by it and to also share ourselves with it. And this is a poem that I wrote about a friend of mine who went through a very, very difficult time. It's called Luminous. My friend Noel came for dinner 
and I admit I invite him because he is luminous. Two years ago, Noel fell from the roof of his house and was told by doctors he would not walk again. He drove to my house, walked to my door, and climbed my steps. We sat in my parlor and had a drink and told stories and ate dinner together. We see each other's luminosity in heightened states, extreme emergency, extreme ecstasy. Noel has been putting his broken back together, bone by bone, tendon by tendon. What does my body do across the table from his body, across narratives, under sinew? How do my neurons rearrange themselves to accept his transmissions and send clear signals? I suppose since we are broken in different ways, my brokenness speaks to him and his to me. It is only through the cracks in the egg we see. Sometimes it's, it's not me, it's not somebody I care about that feels heavy. Um, there's a word for this that is pretty much the same in German and in Yiddish called Weltschmerz. And this is a poem about Weltschmerz called Rise Again. I wake up weary. I wake up from dreary dreams. I know my eyes are often teary. I wish the future was brighter than it seems. It is a weight upon my shoulders, a sad song in my ears as the days are getting shorter and the end is coming near. How can I survive my melancholy mood? How can I raise my hopes that life can renew and carry on? I know that I am lucky, never hungry, never cold. I know the peace I sleep in is real. I can feel, I need not worry, but I do. My cats curl in my lap. They live the now and teach me how the news they feel is real. But I with heavy heart and anxious mind can fall apart when something far away clouds my day. It is not sober not to worry nor sane to bleed the truth that I am sound in soul and tooth. I'll find my way. I need the solace of old friends. I need new friends to teach me how I can begin again. I need my cats to show me how to defer my angst and purr and listen to the wind. I am a hologram, my heart the whole wide world I am the soul of pain and the light within. I can sing the blues and read the news and rise again, rise again. Sort of on a similar note, <laughs> this is called It Should Have Been a Good Day. And I preface it by a uh, a quote from my friend and mentor, the late poet and filmmaker James Broughton. Follow your own weird. The autumn leaves were falling, the sky was blue and a breeze was blowing. I had lunch with a dear friend at a favorite restaurant and went to a cherished museum to visit old friends in the collection and see an amazing new exhibit. My feline companions have been especially sweet and there has been plenty of good food to eat and I took a long nap with a heating pad on warm to ease my back. And yes, the darkness came sooner. It is the time in the calendar. And yes, I had invitations to share warmth that were clear and very dear. There was something I couldn't shake. Was it a shudder or a fear? or the darkening time of year, or something dreadful coming near. My cats reassured me with lots of snuggles and purrs that maybe I am just weird. It is okay. It is normally abnormal. It is occasionally expected to be weird. It was a good day. 
It was a good day to be weird, to be weird. You are your own problem. Existentially, this is true from birth to death. Socially, it is true after you reach adulthood. I think 36 is the magic number. You have been in charge of your life for exactly as long as your parents were. The alchemy changes at 63, whether it is your eyes or ears or knees or hips or teeth, your heart beats too fast, your lungs pump, too low, and it is not even autumn yet, only late summer. May the fall of your life be its glory, more than the radiance of childhood and the crescendo of adolescence or all that you accomplish, all that you beget. It won't happen in an instance, but once or twice and then more and more, you see a glimmer from a distant star, sparkling waters, a rainbow's arc. And in winter you shiver, and in summer too hot. Fall and spring will make you sneeze. But the pie you baked tonight was the best pie you ever baked. And the frogs are singing, but gently, tomorrow the night will freeze. How many times around the sun do they sing at your birthday? You have laughed and cried with countless abandon. You've been ashamed of yourself and you have basked in applause. This is what the light is like as the afternoon slowly yields to night. And you know, with your cats, you will sleep tight. Icarus. You know the story of Icarus. Um, it's an old Greek myth. Uh, Icarus and his father Daedalus were captives on an island, you know, captured, captured, you know, captured by an evil king, and they couldn't get off, and everything was awful, and they wanted to go home, uh, but there was no way. Uh, the the king had made sure that the you know the island was completely secure, and so Daedalus had the vision of creating wings for his uh, son to fly. And he, you know, slowly picked up the feathers that birds left behind on the beaches and found honeycomb from the bees and, and put together this marvelous pair of wings and he, you know, so that Icarus could fly. So Icarus went on a trial run and the only thing Daedalus said is don't fly too close to the sun. Icarus, Icarus did and went down in the sea and that's the myth. Um, but I think that while, you know, I, I think it was Jack Gilbert, the poet, who said, you can think of Icarus as falling or you can think of Icarus as flying. And this is about Icarus flying. The Emily that I speak of is uh, the great American poet, Emily Dickinson. Icarus. Hope is a thing with feathers. So when I see a bird fly high like Emily, I have hope. Hope is a falling leaf that doesn't just drop, but floats on the wind like the leaves of the trees. I let go of fear and hope I will float. Every night I prepare for sleep, make sure the doors are locked and my cats and I are safe in our castle keep. Every morning I open my eyes, put one foot on the floor and then the other, and I rise. I hope today will be the day I realize I can fly. The time of COVID, you know, bef particularly before the vaccines, but even post-vaccination as we've gone in and out of cover, uh, I've <laughs> <laughs> perhaps too much time with, with two things. One, you keep hearing me talk about cats. Uh, well, I live by myself, except I have two feline companions who are, you know, in another room right now, lest they uh, create too much, too much disruption, but they are delightful companions. The other thing that I've had a, a huge amount of time with is me, you know, that I have spent a lot, a lot of time with myself. 
And so I think what happens um, when you spend a lot of time with yourself is that you start to be aware that there's a dialogue that you're having inside your own head. Uh, this is called the two sides of my brain converse. I tell myself, call a friend. I ask myself, what is the next right thing to do? These instructions irritate my inner philosopher who demands introspection, insight, meaning. The old woman who lives in the back of my soul is far more direct. Clean the stove, brush your teeth, call Kevin. She's the one who feeds the cats and tells me to make a sandwich. My philosopher wants lofty answers to lofty questions. When did time begin and when will it end and begin again? I like to follow his line of reasoning and I want to know how much mystery is yet to be fathomed. The old woman says, to catch a fish, bait a hook, sit by the river and wait. Let your hands listen and maybe the fish will get unlucky. She smiles. She knows how to fry a fish. My philosopher is still looking for the exact temperature to the nanosecond when water comes to a boil. He will wait eternity for his tea. The other thing that <clears throat> I think time to reflect gives us is to think about uh, who are we? Where do we come from? Why are we here? These are the, the three questions that the, the fairy philosopher Harry Hay once asked. Uh, and, and they follow me around. It's just one of those things that, that I heard when, as a young man, and I'm always thinking about that. Maybe not in the front of my brain, but it's something that's happening in the back of my brain. You know, that, <clears throat> that there's a story and one of the things that I have been interested in doing and honored to do is as a volunteer, I've done lots of oral histories uh, for the archives at Georgia State University. And I've interviewed all kinds of people. I've interviewed my parents. I've interviewed many of my friends. I've interviewed elders uh, in Atlanta's Indian community, some of the first uh, Indian Americans who came to this country and what, what were their stories like. And what I know is that my story is, is built on other stories that are built on other stories that are built on other stories and that my story is a building block for other stories and other stories and other stories. Uh, so the name of this last little piece that I'm going to read to you is called Storyville. Storyville is a storied um, place in old New Orleans, which was a, a place where people went to have a good time, and that whenever uh, politicians needed uh, to, you know, stir up some sentiment, they would say, oh, Storyville has to be closed down. People are having too much fun. Uh, this happens everywhere all the time. So... Um, but this is not about too much fun. This is about stories. My life is one story built upon another, built upon my mother's stories and my father's stories. My life is a story built upon my grandparents' stories and my DNA. My story is in part a Bible story, is in part a myth from ancient Greece, a nursery rhyme. It is written in Shakespeare's hand. It is a declaration of independence, of human rights, leaves of grass, a yellow brick road, a lush life, a howl. My story is told upon the land where I live. My home has been owned by 19, has been owned since 1947 by people a lot like me. The land it was built on was owned by some people and worked by other people and stolen from the first people who wandered these woods, hunted and gathered, and before them, only deer and rabbits and squirrels and birds, snakes and lizards, who know they are original. Trees shelter my story. The wind blows the chimes on my porch. Honeysuckle vines grow in profusion, and the ancient frogs sing from frost to frost. 
My story, which began in stardust, continues tonight as my fingers type and my laptop hums, and with the touch of a button, my story joins your story, and we enter eternity together. Following uh, my talk, we're going to uh, enjoy some music uh, that uh, features my friend Suryadeep Bhattacharya. And I always have to apologize for mispronouncing names and phrases uh, uh, in Bengali or Hindi. Uh, but Suryadeep uh, and I have had the pleasure of performing together. Or it was my pleasure. It may have been... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it may have been more of a duty for him. He was a good sport. He was a good sport. He's such an excellent musician. And um, he, he is uh, featured on a, a video of a Hindu movie song, an old Bollywood song called Kuku Holi Koli Lia. Again, my, my apologies. Uh, Bian Chen Mai is the singer and producer. Uh, Sripasad Kotaji is the wonderful tabla player. And I found the English translation, which I think goes right along with what we are talking about in terms of is, is life worth it. Uh, the English translation of the title is The Cuckoo Bird Sings. And basically what I could interpret from listening to the lyrics, and we'll post the link to the lyrics, uh, both in Hindi and English, so you, you can see for yourself, is, is, is love worth the risk? You know, so is love worth the risk? Is life worth the risk? You know, it's, it's something that the song addresses. There's another song that's close to my heart that I learned to sing, but I don't have a piano player tonight. When, when things resume in person, we'll, we'll get the piano player and, and maybe I can practice and sing you the song. Uh, and I, I thought of it partly because the, uh, the man who uh, wrote the song, Stephen Sondheim, who is truly one of the, oh, I don't know, the geniuses of our time, recently died. He left behind quite a legacy in terms of the, the music for many, many Broadway shows that, you know, whether you've seen the show or not, you've heard the song, and the song has become, it's, it's on the jukebox of many of us. Um, this song is called Being Alive. And what I think that it refers to I mean, it means something different every time you hear it, every time you sing it. But what I think it refers to is, you know, an answer to the question that we're asking, is life worth the risk? And um, Sondheim, you know, talks about, you know, finding somebody who will hold you close uh, and hurt you too deep and sit in your chair and ruin your sleep. Uh, someone to need you too much, to know you too well, to pull you up short, to put you through hell. Someone you have let, you have to let in. Someone whose feelings you spare. Someone who, like it or not, will want you to share a little, a lot. Someone to crowd you with love. Someone to force you to care. Someone to make you come through who will always be there as frightened of you as you of being alive, being alive, being alive. Thank you for listening. Uh, it's always a pleasure to, to share poetry and observations with people who are dear to me and to the broader community of people who are dear to you. Um, until next time, my thanks.
efforts that you have taken for this and uh, we are very much thankful to the sarod players and the uh, the people those who were on the instruments please convey our regards to them uh, okay. before we uh, uh, you know would you like to say something now <laughs> you know just uh, it's a question. pleasure to talk to you it's a pleasure to talk thank yeah. you there are uh, yeah there are some questions uh, ma'am would you like to say something like my first uh, okay we'll take the questions okay yeah uh, there are questions asked by our students on uh, the, in the drop box in the chat box of youtube uh, i okay. also invite our uh, teachers also to please uh, drop some questions in the chat box i will take two questions uh, there is uh, one very interesting question frankly asked by our student chirag kajare uh, he asks why do we give up 
is it because we have lost hope or because we lack the ability to do that you know i think that uh, we give up for many different reasons many different reasons it, you you can sort of think of it as you know your motorcycle or your car is going to give up when it runs out of gas now if you put more petrol into the car or the motorcycle maybe it will run again and sometimes i think that we are just exhausted uh that um too many difficult things have happened and i believe that um it is uh you know it, it really is about human being to human being giving up is not necessarily a bad thing because at the end of our lives we have to let go in order to go into spirit and into the next incarnation we have to let go of this body and so giving up in life is practice you know every now and then we have to let go of something and it's not altogether a bad thing okay and there is another question by our student abhinay asking that uh, what is your definition of life and self realization these are big questions <laughs> <laughs> life is is this is an informal definition so so i don't get uh, you know I, i don't have to answer the same question twice the same um but life to me is very much about breath it's about being aware of the breath that we all breathe that you know keeps our bodies alive that keeps us you know percolating and uh here so i think that that's for me at least a, a definition of life and self realization is something that happens day by day minute by minute uh, day by day minute by minute we become who we are yeah any question from our faculty members you can directly ask the question by just unmuting yourself or we shall proceed for the conclusion just wanted to thank you sir thank you very much nice poems and tradition was really beautiful very old hindi film song yes yes very good thank, thank you. you very much thank my you. pleasure my pleasure I, i hope to be with you all again one day in person yes. it would yes. be wonderful <laughs> to see you okay uh franklin we liked your poems uh, really you know it was really nice uh i particularly like the line you said my story joins in your story and starts eternal music and another poem that you rendered was being alive being alive and uh, i was using microphones because you know it was so melodious to listen to the cadence with which you were speaking and you have also referred to uh, stephen dedalus and the mythological story of uh, icarus and dedalus you also talked about a uh, very wonderful poetess of america emily dickinson and her poem i remember i was like you know uh, like sitting in a class of british uh, english poetry and uh, uh, she you know uh, she says uh, hope you know she emily dickinson talks about hope is the thing with feathers that persists in the soul she says so it was wonderful and uh, listening to various uh, references to stephen dedalus i could remember james joyce's uh, novel ulysses he wrote in 1922 he was a modernist uh, novelist it was wonderful to listen to you and uh, both the songs as the principal madam has rightly pointed out kuhu kuhu bole ko eliya and uh, chandrika dekh chhai they were wonderfully sung uh, please convey our uh, you know thanks and regards to the people uh those who are associated with them uh with us and uh, i thank you profusely for accepting our invitation and uh, coming out with a wonderful melodious lecture
uh, now i propose vote of thanks i thank uh, franklin abbott for his wonderful rendition of songs and meaningful insights i thank our chairman dr vijay bedekar vidya prasarak mandal i thank dr suchitra naik madam principal of joshi bedekar college i thank vice principals professor subhash shinde dr premoda tokekar dr mahesh patil sir and uh, i thank all the heads of the department teachers students those who are listening to us online and all the stakeholders of this institutions thank you very much i now request uh, to play pasaidan so that we can reach to the culmination of this wonderful session atmati devi ini वाग्यूषावे तो शूनी मजद्यावे पसाय दे खड़ा व्यंकटी कांडो तया सत्कर्मी रतिवाड़ो परे पड़ो मैत्र जीवा दुरीता देती मेरा विश्व स्वधर्म सूर्य पाहो जो देवांशील तो ते शत सकल मंगली ईश्वर निष्ठान की मांदियानवरत भूमंडली भेट तू भूता चला कल्पतरु टेक्निकल सपोर्ट आई ऑल्सो थैंक डॉक्टर महेश पाटिल सर एंड द एंटायर कमिटी 
बी एन बेडेकर मेमोरियल लेक्चर सीरीज कमिटी थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड आई डिक्लेयर दैट द प्रोग्राम इज ओवर थैंक यू थैंक यू फ्रेंकलीन एबोट सर फॉर यूर टाइम थैंक यू एवरी वन फॉर अटेंडिंग द लेक्चर थैंक यू वेरी मच